In this video, I'm going to break down my top 10 productivity apps that every student should use. My name is Amon. I'm a student studying computer science, and using these apps has completely transformed the way I work. I'm now much more organized and get a lot more done. Timestamps are in the description, so feel free to jump around. With that, let's begin. My first favorite app is Notion. Now, if you're a productivity nerd like me, you've probably already heard of this app. Notion at its core is a note-taking app, but the idea of a note-taking app is a lot broader than people initially imagine. Think about it this way. If I told you something that you found very interesting, what would you do with that information? There are multiple things you could do. The first group of people wouldn't do anything with that new knowledge. They'd listen to it, think, wow, that was really useful, shrug their shoulders, and then move on with their life. Most people are in this category. You like passively learning, but you'd never think to store information anywhere else other than your brain. The second group of people would think, hmm, maybe I should put this down somewhere so I can revisit it at a later date. These people see the value of storing information, but they don't have any system or routine for doing so. Every time they hear something interesting that they want to save, they use a hodgepodge of different poorly put together tools to get the job done. For example, they might write it down on a slip of paper and then lose it. Or they'd note it down on a random app on their phone without thinking about it beforehand. Now the problem with this is that if you don't have a system for where everything should go, you'll never be able to find anything in the future. Level 2 is better than simply trusting your brain, but it's still not good enough. The third kind of people regularly use a note taking app and already have a system for where different kinds of information should go. This is the best situation. If you hear something related to your classes, you have a set low location for everything classes related. If you see a news article about proper folding techniques for clothes, you know exactly where to save that for the future. I like to redefine the term note taking app to second brain because these apps aren't just for taking notes. They're useful for any kind of information you want to look back on in the future. I use my second brain for a whole host of different reasons. Of course, I use it to take notes for my classes, but I also use it to write video scripts, take notes over my singing lessons, and even write down the proper washing machine techniques for different clothes. It's a catch-all system for anything I want to revisit in the future. The reason Notion is amazing is because it's so open-ended. You can literally do anything with it. Other note-taking apps force you to use notebooks or folders, but Notion doesn't do anything like that. You build your own structure from the ground up. If you're interested in learning more about what is Notion, how to use Notion, and why Notion is amazing for computer science, you can watch my recent video on the topic. If you're a student, I implore you to give Notion a try, especially if you're studying computer science. But even if you don't use Notion, everyone should be regularly using some kind of note-taking app. It could be Apple Notes, OneNote, Evernote, but Notion is by far the best one. The second app that every student should have is some kind of calendar app. My personal choice is Fantastical. Fantastical is great because of its natural language processing. Basically, if I want to add an event, let's say I'm getting lunch with my friends tomorrow, all I have to do is this. Lunch tomorrow with friends at noon. That was incredibly fast. It only took a few seconds and there it is. Because this is so quick and easy, it makes it much more likely that I'm actually going to use my calendar. But aside from Fantastic Cal specifically, what's the point of even using a calendar? You might be thinking, I'll just remember everything I have to do. Why do I need to write anything down? See, I had that mentality during my freshman year of college too. But the thing about university is that it's not just your classes you need to remember. You have exams, clubs, sports, hangouts with your friends. It's really hard to track everything completely in your head. There were times where I'd literally forget to go to things. I'd be working on homework or relaxing and I'd completely forget that I had an event to go to. This happened more than once. Don't be me. Start using a calendar when you go to college. I use a calendar to note down any events that have a specific start and finish time. For example, the first thing I did was put down the timings of every single one of my classes. Every time I hear about any event in the future, I just throw it in my calendar. Because of this, I pretty much never forget to attend anything ever again. Another great thing about a calendar is that you can visually see when you have openings in your schedule. It's not just floating around in your head anymore. Because of this, I became much better at time management and planning because everything is just down in this system. Everyone should be using a calendar. I don't know why more people don't. Every day, all I do is open my calendar, give it a quick glance, and I know every single thing I have to go to that day. It's a completely magical experience. Coming up next is a to-do list app. Now, I personally use Things 3, but I'd recommend Todoist or really any other app. They all do the same thing. Now, the point of a to-do list is to keep track of all the non-time specific activities. Basically, it helps you store everything that you need to get done, but not at a specific time. If it was an event, it would go on your calendar, not your to-do list. To-do lists are an awesome way to remember your assignments. Once a week, I'll open up Canvas and check what assignments are coming up. Then I'll put them all on my to-do list and schedule them out as to when I'm going to finish them. Because of this, all I have to do is every morning, open up my to-do list app and do what I've already put on there. That way, I basically never forget to do anything anymore. To-do lists are great for quick capture. As soon as I remember I need to do 
choose something, I immediately throw it in my to-do list. That way I'll never forget it. It's especially useful if I know I need to do something, but just not right now. My fourth favorite app is Dark Sky. Now this app is something I haven't heard a lot of other YouTubers talk about. One thing that everyone should have is a good weather app like Dark Sky. Now you're probably wondering, wait, doesn't everyone already have the default weather app? And yeah, that's true. But the problem with the default weather app is that it only tells you general weather trends. Something about living on a college campus is that you don't only need to know the general weather for the day. You also need to know about when specifically that weather is going to happen. Dark Sky gives you real-time weather data, which is extremely useful. Think about it this way. Let's say I'm in one of my classes and it's about to rain. Dark Sky will tell me in exactly how many minutes it's going to start, so I know precisely when to leave the building and arrive to the next one. This is beautiful for walking and chances of rain because you know to the minute exactly when you need to run from building to building. This app is incredible for university students because we do so much walking on campus. Coming up next is Audible. Now, Audible has been life-changing for me. Like most people, when I was a kid, I absolutely loved reading. I would get through dozens of books every few months, reading at every opportunity I had. However, as soon as I entered high school, this habit just vanished. I didn't even realize I'd stopped reading entirely until I looked back years later. But about a year ago, I picked up the four-hour work week, and after that, I slowly rediscovered my love of reading. Now, there are many techniques that help me read more, but probably the most effective discovery I've made that helps my personal reading is math maximizing audiobooks. Before I discovered audiobooks, every time I read, I'd have to either give something up or try to multitask it with something else, like breakfast. But after I started listening to audiobooks, I realized that I was doing so many things that had dead air, meaning I wasn't talking or doing anything else that I really had to focus. Most people have two to three hours of dead air time. And if you can utilize just a small percentage of that with audiobooks, you can get through so many more books. You'll make some serious progress. As soon as I wake up in the morning, I'll immediately put in my earphones and start listening to an audiobook or podcast. This gives me between 30 minutes and an hour of listening time before I start working while I'm getting ready and eating breakfast. I also listen while I'm making meals and cleaning up and right before I go to bed. Because I listen to everything at a faster speed, it helps me consume more content and read more books. When I'm visiting home, which is about a three hour drive from here, I listen to an audiobook the whole time, which makes the experience much more enjoyable. Another place I regularly use Audible is when walking from class to class. As students, we do this a lot, and that is just open time where you're not really doing anything else. I usually like to listen to narrative style books instead of reading them, like all the fantasy books I read or any memoirs. Basically, any books that I don't want to slow down and take notes over, I'll listen to. Some of my personal favorites are Mistborn and The Stormlight Archive, both by Brandon Sanderson. Every student should give Audible a try, especially if you used to love reading but you just can't find the time to do so anymore. My next step is Castro. So, another piece of audio content I love listening to is podcasts. Now you're probably thinking, I already have Spotify, so couldn't I just use that to listen to my podcasts? But listen, Spotify is not a great podcast player at all. It's extremely bloated because it has music and podcasts, two very different things. The design is not intuitive either. I feel like Spotify is becoming like Facebook, where they combine a ton of different features into one app. The problem is that people listen to music and podcasts in completely different situations. No one listens to a few songs, then a podcast, and then goes back to a few songs. This makes Spotify confusing because they mesh everything together. This is why I prefer to use a dedicated podcast app like Castro. Castro is far better than Spotify. The way you subscribe to new podcasts and listen to new episodes is extremely simple. First, you start on the Discover section where you can search up new podcasts. Once you subscribe to any of them, they're all listed alphabetically in your library. You can listen to new episodes here, but Castro automatically adds new episodes of the podcast you subscribe to chronologically in your inbox. If you scroll through your inbox and notice anything you want to listen to, all you have to do is add it to your queue. Then you have a nice list of of downloaded podcast episodes that you've hand selected. This organization is far better than any other podcast app and is excellent for people like me who subscribe to a ton of different podcasts. Castro also gives you complete customizability. You can select preferred speeds for different podcasts, so if I'm listening to something really interesting or deep, I can choose to have it slowed down. Castro also lets you sideload from other apps. Basically, if I find a cool interview from YouTube, I can just turn it into a podcast episode like this. I just share it from YouTube and then it automatically loads into Castro. This is incredible for old episodes of the Joe Rogan experience that I want to listen to in a dedicated podcast app. If you're someone who loves podcasts or wants to get into them, don't use Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Castro is by far the better option. My next app is Outlook, which is my email app of choice. Now, email apps are pretty basic 
basic. Almost every single person has one. They all are pretty similar. I prefer Outlook, but I've heard pretty good things about Spark as well. You could also just use the basic Gmail app. One important thing I like to do related to email is turn off all email notifications on my phone. The thing about email is that you only, at most, need to check it once per day, if even that. You'll never be in a situation where someone emails you and desperately needs something in under 24 hours. I know so many people who compulsively check email 10, 20, 30 times per day. It's like another social media app at this point, but instead of depressing news, it's filled with social and academic commitments that you can't fulfill at this time. All they do is distract you from working. Since I've stopped checking email, I feel much less stressed. Now all I need to do is extend this policy to all my other social media apps. App number eight is Drafts. Drafts is my app of choice for Quick Capture. Quick Capture is the process of storing ideas in a more reliable system than your memory and then operating them later on when you have the time. Now, I talked about Notion earlier in this video, but the problem with Notion is that it's not very fast on the go. Often, people don't have the time to open up Notion and navigate to the proper section before you write anything. You need a first-level inbox, somewhere ideas can sit before they're transferred into long-term storage. Notion for me. This is what Drafts is for. As soon as something comes to mind, I immediately put it down in Drafts. This could be video ideas, article ideas, or even a grocery list. Drafts handles it all. Then, sometime in the future, I will sort through my drafts and move them to the proper location, usually in Notion. The beauty of drafts is how utilitarian and minimalistic it is. Its load time is super fast. One great feature is that when you open up drafts, its default behavior is to open to a blank note. This removes that few seconds of friction that exists in almost every other app where you have to create a new page. It seems small, but it makes a big difference. I usually batch the processing of my drafts all together once per week. This is also when I go through my to-do list and calendar and schedule out everything during my weekly review. Drafts is a free app that everyone should have on their phone. It's basically an optimized, slightly better Apple Notes. Number nine is LastPass. Now this password management app is incredibly underrated. Seriously, it's a crime that everyone doesn't use something like this. Basically, this app automatically stores all your passwords in an encrypted vault. Most people have terrible password habits. First of all, they'll use the same simple password for every single app or website, which is incredibly unsafe. All it takes is someone getting or guessing that one password and they have everything. The reason people do this is because they don't store their passwords elsewhere. They just use their head, meaning they have to choose simple passwords. Even if you use the automatic Google Safe Password feature, that's also really unsafe. There have been stories of people going onto websites and downloading malicious software, which goes straight for Chrome and mines all your passwords. This is why you should use something like Dashlane or LastPass. They're both free. These apps auto-generate random complex passwords, and then they store them for you in a secure vault that no one else can access. Everyone should be using LastPass, especially if you're a student. You'll probably have several different accounts that you need to keep track of, and it would be a horrible situation if someone were to gain access to all of them. My last app on this list is a strong flashcard app like Anki or Quizlet. I made a dedicated video on this subject, but the purpose of a flashcard app is to automate your studying for certain subjects. Anki and Quizlet are two dedicated flashcard apps. In short, here are some of the differences between them so you can pick which one you'd like to try. The benefits of Quizlet is that it looks really nice and clean and it's super easy to use. Plus, most people already have experience with it, which provides a low bar to get started. If you're a student, you've probably already tried it at some point. The problem with Quizlet is that it's a little too simple. There aren't very many advanced or custom features, which is fine for the basic use, but if you want to get to maximum productivity, I'd recommend checking out Anki. Anki is definitely a lot uglier than Quizlet and it does take some getting used to. However, if you're someone who wants to try the most effective possible app, I would recommend giving Anki a try. It has this ultra intelligent space repetition algorithm built into it, which adapts to the way you interact with it and makes learning significantly easier and faster. Basically, every time you do a flashcard or answer a question, it will ask you whether you found it easy, medium, or hard, and it will use this complex software to determine when it should ask you the same question next. Over time, it adapts to you and can predict how well you understand something. Thing. If you're a computer science student, you should definitely try out Anki. It can seem complicated, but if you have experience programming, you'll be able to figure it out. If you're interested in learning more about some of these apps, here's a playlist where I go into way more detail on them. Thank you for watching, a like would be incredible, and I will see you in the next video.